Okay, hello my fellow earthlings. I am in my home Iceland Kame studio in Norway and I'm going to show you a drawing I just finished which I'm now going to post on my channel and it is this, my very very deceased cat. Uh, the tail and stuff changed a little bit while I was drawing it because I've been doing it for like one and a half year or something when I've been here off and on and uh, now it's summer and in winter I guess it stiffens up and changes a little bit. I found this uh, cat in the hay uh, many years ago when I built this barn into a studio. You can see how it is. It's quite a nice place. So here I'm working when I'm at my parents or where I grew up. So I found this in the hay and I decided to to draw it and I'm also going to make a painting of it uh, at some point. And here you actually have the finished drawing and I've been fighting like crazy with this back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it's it's not easy because you have to get all the kind of the, the sense of of dead flesh basically and uh, stuff and I've been working so much that I almost gave up actually several times I almost gave up just going back and forth uh, with all these uh, uh, nuances and things and maybe some of you I'm not claiming that this is kind of a fantastic piece of drawing because there's a lot of people that are you know, unbelievable good at drawing in charcoal but I did what I could and also there's something that when as you as you do a drawing like this and um, you go over it again and again and again and it gets even more and more difficult to get um, the total white out of it. So if I planned it a little bit better and had built up some more skill before I started I would have maybe done it in a different way to keep more on the whites. But it, I think it came out quite quite well and was a long long struggle and this is a very long video. So I hope you enjoy and who knows, maybe somebody likes to listen to my rantings and see how I did this drawing from start to finish. You can also see how I kind of just created some room in it with more sketch like scavur here and as I to thicken it more here is my signature as I went along. Also uh, how to get the shadow to feel that like it hits the surface instead of being a hole. So yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I do hope that you can give it a thumbs up, you leave a comment, share it on social media and if you like to uh, like my work and like me to uh, help you evolve your painting skills you can go to Patreon and sign up for a dollar or five or 15 or 500 or whatever you think is suitable and I will through there help you the best I can with you evolving your painting skills. So with this I beg you a fine for a while and keep painting, keep living, keep having fun and live life. Yes, bye bye. Enjoy. Okay here I am. Uh, what I'm going to do is to draw this mummified cat on this canvas, this uh, paper. Not canvas, but paper. I am actually in my studio in my hometown, home Iceland, Kame. I made a barn into a studio. And this is basically how that looks. It's an old barn, uh, part of a small farm, it used to be. And instead of letting it fall down, I just took and built it into a 
studio. Anyway, it's going to be fascinating. When I made this, uh, I uh, found two cats and a bunch of rats and strange looking animals mummified in the hay. Uh, they were probably... Uh, probably uh, mummified because they were lying in this this uh, very dry hay old hay so it just pulled out all the all the moisture and uh, here it is like a Egyptian mummy it's really cool really I love it. Also going to paint it, but that would be another time, next time maybe. I'll bring a canvas and paint it on a square probably. Uh, yeah, and this uh, process video. So if you want to watch, just keep watching. <laughs> watch the process. So. Yay! Time to rumble. Uh, it is going to be... I guess I made a paper that I put two papers together because I wanted to be life size and, and the shadows will be on here. Cat will probably Cat's head will be along here. Just another here. And it comes down like this. There's an eye down. Snout. And it goes up here. This. Yeah, I think that should be okay. Um, bit smaller because the legs you see uh, um, and two so there's like one and two no one and two so the legs will come all the way down here and maybe that is okay like this Maybe I should put it higher. But then again, that comes up here. Down like this. Now I, I'm not a. It's a long time since I actually did any charcoal drawings. So it's going to be, I did one, a cranium, uh, sheep's head, I think, or was it deer, sheep, sheep, I think it was, a while ago, and became quite nice, but it's not really, it's something, not that, something I've done in quite a while, so it's very new to me. It's very cool. The shadow coming out here. This. There. Now it's the same thing as with painting. You just have to go back and forth. The shadow actually comes down here. So I did a mistake. And the shadow goes out here. And it comes down like this. Now. I'm just doing the same thing that I do with my paintings. I, I just start putting stuff in the right places and then I start to mold it like I do with a and move things around. how I do it so yeah I think that I think it's going to be okay and let's see again one and two okay so I need to 
get ahead right first so I'll move my I work myself this way that's a good thing to do because you don't mess it up you just build it that way and not that way okay you, you wouldn't start with a tail anyway I guess so, okay silly it's like half past seven in the morning so I just want to start it up and go get some sleep and continue that process tomorrow. Uh, so cool. The tail spins out of here. strong shadows. I also put on quite a hard light so I get a lot of shadows and stuff because it's kind of fun. I think I should buy a canvas and start painting it too. Why not? I'm here for another week and it could be fun to start it up. Maybe I'll do both. Yeah, I didn't want the reason I put it a little bit more there because actually it's going to be cut like this. I actually wanted it to be a square on the drawing but I'm not able to do that so I haven't got enough that would be putting four together and that would look like shit so and I don't want to cut it you know I don't want to cut it um, a place I want to have some balance to it So I'm letting the, the um, where I fuse the paper come a little bit in the golden snit or whatever you call it. The, golden snit. So it kind of balances out. And then you don't notice it. If I put it just in the middle, it would be too clear. You know, if I put it here, it would be like cutting out a head. So you have to place it somewhere that isn't noticed that much. And uh, I guess that would be around here somewhere. Now. a friend who is a brilliant drawer, probably one of the best. His name is Leandro and uh, it's amazing to see how he works with his drawings. I'm probably more of an expressionist so Yeah. There's shadows, needs. Shadow 
this one's here. This stone. The feet comes in here. Comes down here. Comes in. Yeah. Okay. We can have it the right size. So then it's just to start molding. Okay. I don't want it to be 10 hours long, so it just take 10 minutes. Uh, maybe I should zoom a little bit. I don't even know if you can see what I've done. But when I start getting the shadows in, it would be more easy to see.
Okay. So it seems like it's I'm doing having some progress. And I guess that is a good thing. Also see the split won't be that noticeable when I'm finished. So that's a good thing also. Now what I do is just to keep on going back and forth with the drawing and uh, moving things about as I do when I paint and I already see some things that definitely can be better and they will. Now five in the morning, so I'm gonna do a little bit more and go to bed. Quite cold in this barn at night. The weather is changing rapidly. So that's why I wear this. In the middle of the summer. See. Well, what I do is just I go down and I start to just give it more shadow, and then I pull back the white again. And I also use my finger, and then later I start to mold the texture of the dead skin the mummified skin so going in with details but I need to get it quite right first so I shouldn't hurry it because if you do too many mistakes and you have to correct and correct and correct it's not like in it's not like in a painting where it actually gets better in the end it's just a mush and you can't get any more any more charcoal into the paper and you start losing the lights because you can't get it up to the whites again but then again I work and then I spray it with some cicative and and um, I start molding again. Also, often use I'm gonna show. I use pencils, and I use my fingers, and uh, yeah. It's just the beginning. So, I hope it's going to be okay. I don't think I've done any really big mistakes. I just have to, the head is probably going to be a little bit smaller. And different things shoulder blades.
once I have made the stomach too thick and I just move it up so it gets thinner and now I can see that the throats is to be a little bit thinner and different stuff I just work myself back and forth also see the other legs in here so actually I work like this when I when I sketch paintings I often use my pencil like this but that is with color and I'm really not used to doing charcoal so it's a different process oh this one funny it's like the whole thing has just dried out and it's almost like the gas within it when it was rotting just exploded out or maybe it is rats that has chewed on it but it's not so easy to say quite cold now so I want to go to bed continue in the morning and tomorrow okay there we are charcoal drawing cat mummy and uh, yeah it's a while since I've been drawing on it now but I'm gonna try to finish it. It's quite difficult probably, but then again, that is the thing that I love. It's a challenge. And uh, without that challenge there wouldn't be much point of everything, anything, I mean. So yeah. The shadow is quite hard, so it's gonna give this quite a good sculptural uh, dimension. I do like to put the light on it quite hard, so that uh, I get this very, basically the same thing as when I'm painting. I'm trying to get that uh, sculptural dimension of it. I'm not that into uh, super, super duper perfection because I'm actually not skilled enough. 
<laughs> that's the truth of it. All my extent and my, my um, capability of, of um, focusing my brain into a very, uh, very um, photorealistic realm is more difficult for me than actually trying to make a dynamic drawing. I have to do some changes because I've changed the motifs. So. And the paper I'm using is uh, a little bit thick, maybe not the best. Uh, well, it's good paper, but yeah, you know, it could always be better. It's almost like if I do some mistakes, it's hard to get the uh, get the charcoal out of it after that. But it's kind of fine, so it's okay. Also, so annoying with these glasses because it kind of makes it a little bit harder for me to draw. Because when I'm here, here it's kind of clear, and the cat is clear because I've become a little bit long sided, which is a plague actually on my, my work because I used to have this. 100% perfect, perfect uh, vision. So I need to look into maybe, maybe try an operation. I'm not sure because it's my eyes, so I'm a little bit scared of actually operating on my eyes to adjust the long sightedness but I will look into it because it's quite annoying and if a little correction could change it it would be fine but then again if I stay in ketosis don't eat much carbs and don't drink alcohol stuff like that my vision actually becomes quite clear so it's also due to what I eat and stuff like that so if you have problems with your vision actually do, doing ketosis and eating very healthy really helps so okay Enough about that um, what I see I'm trying to do the same thing um, what I'm doing is is uh, both taking away and adding at the same time, doing the, basically in a way the same thing as I do with a painting, uh, adding, subtracting. Now I can't build physical texture with coal or charcoal. At least not in the way I can do it with uh, with uh, oil paint. But I sure can try to give it think directions and stuff like that. So yeah, it's interesting really because I haven't been doing any. Uh, much actually drawings, charcoal drawings, or drawings at all actually for for a few years. I did one cranium, but uh, that wasn't much. So it's interesting just because of that, and it's also a little bit different process. I have to attack it in a little bit different way. Just interesting, interesting in itself. Thank you. 
think this will secure a little bit because there's also some textures in the background. And I'll make it down like this and then just cross over it. Basically try to cross over like this and then do it like this and try to build it. Um, almost like they did with uh, my painting. gonna be nice It'll be fun so yeah well I can do some more there's some holes you know and it's funny with this cat is it was lying in the hay and I guess all the the intestines and everything just dried up like this mummy cat I also found a rat just crawled up, has died. So. It is like a to be or not to be kind of situation. It reminds me of my own demise. This cat was running around and having a life, and then it became sick, and old probably. I went away hiding because that is what animals do when they get sick they hide so they're not going to be easy prey and it died in peace and then it just basically fell apart it's kind of a beautiful thing and now it's becoming art so It prolonged its purpose. I'm gonna try to work with this until I really really make an effort to make this feel like a good drawing when I'm done. So all the different shadows nice because I have a hotter shadow in here and then kind of slides over to a lighter shadow and yeah it's, it's really interesting So it's, it's the same process, you know, I'm going to build this, trying to build this uh, relief thing. And, uh, it is a step-by-step -step thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. See you later. Okay. A little later. Here we are. Still.
still drawing. Six in the morning, typical me. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. It's funny to see how uh, insects and have created holes in the skin. It's funny to look at uh, skin like this, you know, it's just like paper in a way, it's some strange kind of paper. They used to make this, make uh, books out of skin like this and draw on them before paper. So, yeah. It's almost like it's starting to itch a little bit when I I see the texture of that skin. It really looks dead. So, it's kind of getting a little bit more 3D, but I have a very long way to go, so keep on drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing also I used to use some pencils in the end you know I can actually go in with a pencil when I have done more and enhance some small details with instead of using the fingers because there is a lot of grease on the fingers when you do it over and over again and that can actually affect the capability of getting the charcoal removed if you do some mistakes Kind of what I do is just take this this um, pencil and I can kind of go in and remove charcoal like this and create some almost metallic. I can also use flat pencils and. You create some kind of metallic uh, feel to it all. Like this. And then I go over it again and strengthen the parts I want to strengthen. And of course, also think directions. What kind of directions I want to go over that again? Just basically keep on banging on like that. Oh. In this shadow, this can be very nice because you don't necessarily want any. Uh, I want the textures to be here, so in the shadows, this can be a good way to 
kind of get the shadow look more like it hits the surface. And then of course I will go over it again. And maybe one more one more time. And then just continue doing these things. So this gets a little bit different texture from the skin which will be a little bit rougher. And um, yeah, there's a hole there going all the way back, so like this. And just pull a little bit out again. So, actually, this shadow is going all the way down here, and the tail comes out all the way here. So it almost goes out of uh, basically around here somewhere. The small details like and then the light kind of hits on top of this here and hits there. Of course, this has to be darker. So. And I also will give this a hue, you know, like this. And also, like this. Give it a sense of being a surface there, too. Now, this is a skeleton. So, hmm. Yeah. But uh, getting tired. It's a shame that I didn't have a I have to kind of glue together a couple of uh Of um, papers to get the big enough paper for this cat. So that's why I have this line, but I don't think it, uh, it is that disturbing. After all, it's a drawing, it's not really perfect. Make it disappear a little bit more here. Hairless cat. It's not so often you see that, is it?
happens all the time. And this is what's higher up, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see into the intestines of it. There's also, actually, there's some spider web inside it. <laughs> I guess a spider figure out a place to hide in it. There are so many adjustments I have to do back and forth, so. I'm just trying to get it right now anyway, so... Okay, I want to also do from some other angles. So, see what happens. Okay, there we are. A little bit further. I figured out I had to give the whole thing a uh, kind of a hue so that I can kind of go in with a uh, uh, knetgummi, as it's called in Norway, and then just bring out the light areas. Also, maybe with some knife and just start to to mold some textures and stuff. Uh, and also then now start to give the background a little bit of um, hue. Uh, same thing, as you can see, I just. Lightly do some scravur. I can also use my fingers over it, but I'm a little bit scared of getting too much grease, as I said, into the paper. Uh, because the fingers are have some kind of oil on it, or Just to make it up, it's, it's going to be very much light here, but it also it does have to have a, a texture, you know. So the good, best thing is to kind of push it down here. Just try to make it darker up here, and um, just give it some texture here, and then bring it up again after the fact. Um, yeah. It's, it's actually doing charcoal, 
for me, is a slower process than painting. It takes more time for me to create a, a charcoal drawing than it will take me to actually paint this. Because when I paint, I use my brushes, I build with uh, textures and I build with and pushes the shapes with uh, layers of, of paint and pushing them down. I also have then the, the colors to to help me to push it. I don't have that here and um, I haven't been doing much of these charcoal drawings for many many years. I made this one cranium a while ago. So I'm also out of uh, training, which also hampers it a little bit, or quite much. I never actually, I never actually studied deep into charcoal. For some reason, I'm more a painter, but I will do more of it now because. I'm wondering to start doing some lithography or some print and uh, it would be a good thing to learn to draw better. So I'm going to start doing portraits, I'm going to start doing um, all kinds of things actually to get better. Now the feet here I'm just going to cross over like this and then I will pull it back out. I don't know what that's called. In, uh, in Norway it's called knetkumi. Uh, it's kind of the thing you use to bring out to take away. See now I just build and then I pull the light out. Um, it is what we use to drain coal. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you do a mistake in oil, it's also easier to correct the mistakes because you can just do an old paint. But here, it's a little bit more tricky because if you put the charcoal in too hard it is almost impossible to get away every every uh, line or stuff like that so someone has to be a little bit more careful just going to pull it down a little bit more and drag over like this, then I will you know, just do basically the same thing that I would do with paint. I use the background to explain the shape like this. A lot of things hanging from my loose skin. Uh, tendons. In here you can actually see the skeleton. The tail. Small details I will start doing more of. And as I go along I will go closer to it. And uh, basically draw more details and stuff like that. So what is the goal here? Well the goal is actually just to to try to work with it until a point where I feel it starts to come alive and have some textures and nice things that That makes it feel real. 
I've seen charcoal drawings that are just amazing. There are people who are really good at it. So, but it's also a learning process, like everything else. So I'm just gonna, gonna try to pick it up and learn from my mistakes. And still, at the you know, at the young age of 52, I'm still learning like a child, so, so that's a good thing. I have a childish, well not childish, but kind of a childlike personality, so um, maybe that is why I actually still learn. Child, basically. I also like to use the pencil. As a tool, you know, like here, it's kind of too dark. And I just go in and do like this. And then I can go in after that again and strengthen some parts of it to get more details and contrasts. So, yeah. I wish I had a um, canvas that I could actually paint it also when I'm here, but I guess I'm going to do that later. I have one that is a little bit different, a little bit smaller in my other studio in Oslo. So I'm going to paint a painting and also make a drawing of that in my other studio. So, yeah. I think the proportions are quite okay. So I can actually start working with, um, with the shapes and the lights and all the things that will make it come alive. Right here, it starts to get that thickness. Just don't over it like this, over and over and over again. Okay, that was ten minutes. Okay. So what I'm doing now is that I have to tone the whole thing, as you can see I've toned it a little bit, so that I can make it darker here and get more light over here as I, I go along. And uh, what I do is just to stand here and doing like this over and over and over and over again until it's toned. It's the basically a very slow process which kind of drives me a little bit nuts because with paint I could actually just build both texture and color and light with colors it's almost like I was wondering why the hell should we draw at all Well, it is a different process and it gives different results, so I guess that's why. Let's 
keep on going over and over and over and over. And then I go in with the pencil, get it into the paper. Basically what I do is I can take a flat pencil and do it like this and I'll get it into the paper and uh, then I can actually go in with the knet gummi as it's called in Norway and bring back out the light again after a while and I do this also can go over the shadow here and kind of make it more natural so it kind of glides into the into the paper and as I say I can then take this knet gummi and I can kind of bring out more light by kind of pulling like this and basically using removal and getting the uh, the paper back to get more light. So you can actually do all these ways, bring it back out and more charcoal to bring it back down for the places you want to bring it back down. Going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'll actually start working with a little bit more of the detailed details in the in the cat. <coughs> it's very cold in here now. It's in my barn studio. So it's kind of cold training. Unconsciously making myself uncomfortable with the cold to strengthen my immune system. And um, they say it works, so that's what I'm doing. So many things that is happening in this, and um, I just have to keep banging on until becomes one I want to help. Again, there's a shadow going down there. And I do like this, do this, and of course crossing over like this, and removal. And I'm going to add some more shadow here. So. And that way I keep on building the shape, the textures and everything. So yeah. Just push this down a bit and then um, 
I feel like a novice when I do this. I think I have to go to the internet, go to YouTube and study a little bit of charcoal. I've seen some actually covering, covering, first covering the whole surface with uh, charcoal, just to start pulling things out. But it's all, all it's, it's basically about the same process as painting. You just have to keep on adding details and subtracting. So it's not really a mystery in any way. darker than the background here. Over here is different, so trying to I should use my fingers actually because The grease on the hands. I'm kind of starting to look a little bit like a dead cat, I think. Looking forward to start adding more textures and stuff into this the cat. It will take a while to get there. So funny, it's a strong shadow, it's a weaker shadow. You know, I don't see things in black and white, I see things in color. That is what I'm, when I'm painting, I actually don't see neons in the, in that way. So, to me, it's kind of, I have to transform I see orange and I see blue and I see all kinds of colors and now my only tool is black and white and not even texture just black and white and yeah it's, it's hard it's not easy at all I think I'm starting to like it a little bit. A tiny bit? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh. Also when I, what I do when I get further, I start to add kind of things in that gives it a more dynamic surface without actually damaging the composition, which I also do in my paintings. I basically add brushwork and stuff to. and 
pounds. How's it? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Ten minutes. Okay. Here we are again. And uh, I'm doing more of this toning. As you can see, there's a clear difference between these two now because I've been toning, toning it more and more. Uh, also, go in with some more detail in the background. Now, I do use that paper to. As I did say yesterday, I'm gonna go in and look at some charcoal techniques on YouTube and just freshen it up a little bit. This can give this a good kind of a tone it down. Now that the coal is getting into the pores in the paper and it gets this more even tone, then I can go over that again and start pulling out more, more detail because there has to be a clear difference between the details that comes in the legs and everything and of course the background uh, I don't want it to be too the background to be too noisy which means if I have too much scrabour in the background it will disturb the whole thing. So it's more like a painted drawing in a way. Uh, if you think of a drawing that is very drawn, you will maybe look at Leonardo da Vinci, where it's all lines and kind of rough scrabble, much of it. Now here, it's more like a painted process, where I think like a painter. And I noticed that charcoal, it is fun, not really fun, but uh, it is very, very different from painting, as I did say. And uh, actually, it takes me longer time to do it. So. That is why drawing actually has to almost have the same price as a painting on this in this size because it takes that much time. I'm going to try to build of this butt here and you see that leg underneath the skin and I just need to get this out and what I do is go deeper and deeper into the different shadows and the different such a tedious process you can hear the rain the roof now, actually. And, uh, it's also hard to see what's actually light. It's, it's almost like they, those two are gliding into each other. The only difference is that if this was a painting, there would be a difference in uh, a difference in the colors. Uh, behind here, there would be a little bit reddish. On top here, would be a little bit more blue in it and uh, and that is why it is way easier to make these things in painting because of course you also have the colors and more cards in the deck 
And then again, I, I, I kind of like the, the feel to the charcoal drawing. It's kind of a little bit metallic. And, uh, yeah. It also pushes my skill wall, which is probably the most important things with it in the first place. It's horribly cold in here now because it's October and uh, the barn, because I don't have so much heat here, I'm actually working more as a freezer. It is almost like it is hotter outside than inside in summertime. That could be a good thing because it's really hot outside. It's basically better to, to have it cooler in here, especially in Oslo where I live in my, my studio. And it's always very even. Even if it's extremely hot outside, it never becomes uh, hot. So, yeah. Anyway. I think I will start going deeper into details now because I have done a lot of the toning and then I can just start doing more of the, of the details in the cat. It's actually a shame. I need to buy bigger charcoal um, papers. See if we can get some square, squared papers in the store. I am buying stuff, and that way I will be able to avoid this line. It's not that I think that anyone wants a mummified cat on the wall anyway, so it's not that important. Use my fingers. Shouldn't do that because of the grease, but as long as I keep it, don't do it too much. I think it's gonna be okay. Some holes here, the skin. It's almost like when I look at these small holes in the skin, I will start itching. It's almost like it's like something has crawled in there and just been eating. Um, I guess that's the truth of it. Kind of go pushes in there, comes out here. So I need to get this to become higher. And, uh, Starting to take. At least it does. It does take shape. There's no doubt about that. Show what I'm doing a little bit closer. Let's 
there's a lot of stuff happening. And this this thing tend to when it's cold, it tend to it tend to work. It doesn't work that well. It should have been a little bit more sticky. But the cold actually makes it less sticky and more crisp. So that's a problem also. To think uh, uh, put it into compartments in my head again and just start working the different textures and because the whole thing until now has been more coincidental I just try to mold it in the main characters of it but as to get this to become a better drawing, I really need to focus better on the details. And you know, there's a lot of things happening in it that would be so much easier for me to do in oil because of the textures I could put in, the brushwork, and all the things that you overpaint and different directions. And it's just. The tools in, in drawing are just limited to what I am used to. I've been saying that now over and over again. But I basically feel it more and more. See small things here. There's some small points of light. And this throat coming out like this. Even the hair, so the ear. Hmm. The ear is actually longer down. See that now? Or maybe I'm mistaken. Anyway. Hmm. Yeah, it start, kind of starts to get some more texture and shape. No, okay, I did say that too, but cold therapy is a good thing if you get cold and and stuff it's actually good for the immune system that's proven fact so you know maybe it has a good effect on me to be a little bit cold and uh, everybody wants to be so comfy all the time you know and it's not building your stamina I mean the guy who has this World record in cold or sitting in ice water for half an hour or something every every morning and it would actually make any one other person go into um, cold shock and basically die so it is possible to kind of train the body into taking more more pain and more 
I know that about pain because having done martial arts for many years and getting used to getting hit, it actually increases the pain threshold dramatically. And I can also feel when I haven't done it in a, in a while that when I get hit, it really hurts more than it used to when my brain is used to it. So. Yeah. Okay. So many things happening in these claws. There's a claws there. Yeah. Anyway. Ah, you didn't see the claws. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, here we go. I have done some progress. There's no doubt about that. It is kind of a learning uh, progress, all this. Uh, I... Um, yeah, it is a learning progress. I have to figure out how to differentiate the different things and I still struggle to go back and forth you know and uh, but it's starting to take shape uh, and I uh, will just try to continue to do it like I'm going back back and forth as I say trying to find the right hues and everything and um, maybe it, it probably won't turn out to be something I would sell it would just turn out to become something something of a, a learning as I said learning experience this knet gummy is really annoying because it doesn't it doesn't act right in the cold. Now I got used to the cold a little bit, so it's good. But I would like to have a kind of a thing that. that I can control better. But you know, it's okay too. You know. uh, the thing is that at this point I will try to start adding some focused lines and uh, strengthen details. I also filled out more of the paper because I want to balance the balanced um, uh, composition better if you can see because I needed more weight on this side and uh, it's starting to become a little bit 3d it is it is as I say it is a it is a drawing and uh, yeah the way kind of I'm laying the way, I'm laying the bricks of the way or the asphalt as I, as I walk in a way, I just try to figure out how to be able to make, make it more 3D, you know that's all I do, you know, I'm trying desperately in every in my paintings too, this 3D thing, trying to make it more for shape and and um, come alive like that. It's uh, it's almost my goal. So. 
Yeah. And so uh, the cat also has has some kind of sharp edges, like here. It's kind of a sharp edge that shows the bone underneath. And uh, yeah. I've started to actually use my fingers more. I know I shouldn't do that because of the grease and stuff, but it kind of works for me anyway. So I'm just gonna roll with it. Hopefully it won't ruin, ruin everything. It's kind of so messy anyway because I have gone this drawing I drew it up a long time ago. Probably a couple of years ago I started on it and I haven't done much with it. So it has gone through so many different stages. And uh, it's kind of a messy little thing, really. And uh, yeah. And using the background to strengthen the light. I end up like this directions and stuff. The good thing is that there's some some lines and textures in the background that can actually use to create some more lively background. And that is how I will now start to work with it. Maybe use this. Or a knife or something to make this very... Be very careful when I sharpen it. Ah, I broke. So. No, it doesn't work. I want to. Now, this shadow is way too, too hard. Think. So do like this, use the background to create some more light and a little bit more shape. And then I have to go in here and, and nudge. So like this. Yeah. Like this. It's very, very slow process but I'm starting to enjoy it actually so yeah and, you know. It's going to be nice to actually paint it because I will be able to um, get way more out of it. But I also, as I said earlier, that I have uh, another cat like this, a smaller one, which also died in the same hay in this barn. I'm, I'm drawing it now that I will. Uh, do in Oslo and paint in Oslo and then next summer I'm going to make a painting a big painting of this maybe a huge painting where I blow it up in size and just go all the way in 
I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see what happens. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to finish this drawing before next summer. So now it is October. Ah, oh, shit. This happens all the time. It's so annoying. It's October 212. No, sorry, 220. 212. Jesus. Yeah. I can't even remember 212. Um, and. Uh, Hopefully, I will finish it now in two days, or it will be basically 2.21 before this is done. So, if it ever will be done, I don't even know. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe it will be done in October now. Maybe. It's so hard to say. Because it's kind of cold here now, and the cold tend to wear me down a little bit, so I can't really concentrate that much. Despite it wakes me up in a way. Yeah, that was, wasn't so bad. If I could just get in some more detail and make it feel a little bit more natural. I think it's going to be okay. And, oh. This one has to go somewhere out here. And I just have to do like this, take away everything, and then just tone down this, and then like this, and I have more of a bone. inside there. Yeah, that was wasn't so bad. Oh. You know, as you get closer and closer to the real thing, it also gets easier as it is in in painting to kind of see what you have to deal with, see the details where you want to go, and uh, basically close in on the details that needs to be fixed you know so yeah it's uh... okay mm -hmm. starting to get a little bit of a you know dry feel feeling to it 
little bit of so let's This, I must say, I'm starting to get more of the hang of it. Yeah. Zoom in a little bit. See it. Oh. Well, this is quite fun. It's, it's great fun. So, see you. Okay, as you can see, I have done some progress, definitely progress, and the thing is I'm getting kind of deeper and deeper and deeper into uh, into the textures and the small shadows and stuff, but it, this is when it actually becomes very, very time consuming. I wanted to make finish it now. Uh, it is uh, I think it's thirteenth of October today, but I'm going back to my studio in Oslo, and it seems like I wasn't able to finish it. I mean, it's too much of a nice drawing now at this point for me to just call it a day and uh, don't give a shit. So, and it's very cold in here now, so it's like, uh, I'm standing here for a couple of hours, three hours, and uh, you know, you get this cold into your bone in a way. So, and then I start to get tired, because standing in cold, I tend to become a little bit tired, uh, a little bit strain on the... on the mine but it's also nice it's very nice i try to do something with this in december again if i can get that then it's going to be really cold <laughs> but you know it's fine fine it's fine i think i want to take some photos and also draw one drawing in oslo and one painting and then I will do this in Oslo. I will do it from a photo. I also have another cat, actually, a smaller one in Oslo. So I can do one um, drawing and painting uh, there. And I can do one painting from a photo of this in Oslo. And I also do one painting here, probably this summer or next summer. Um, because that is kind of warm and cozy and so so and then I if I don't finish it in in December I can just continue working on it now it's like now I start to see all the nice things here because you know it's so many things happening in the in the dry skin there's so many things I can get into then I don't, I don't want to rush it, you know. It's like, yeah, I already said that. So I just want to continue doing it. And I also want to buy myself some, some better ruler, some better charcoal. I'm not going to use any, any uh, white. You know, I've seen a lot of people are using... Um, Kind of a char white charcoal or white white pen to to go over it, and that will of course make it easier to build all these textures. 
because then I can also go in and kind of scrabble out uh, uh, the light with the uh, with pen. I feel that would be kind of cheating. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep this drawn. And uh, only black and white, not add any white. Uh, I don't want to white this there, using the whites. Uh, I wonder if I have one here actually. I'll show you what I mean. this by the way. Druvenet charcoal light. I don't know what that means. I'm going to test it out. Oh, that's quite nice. Maybe we should buy more of these. It would be easier to maybe easier. Yeah, try that in Oslo. It gives you more control because this keeps on breaking all the time. It's so annoying. This gives you more control. I'm going to look into that. I'm also going to start drawing way more portraits and self-portraits. I have so many plans, so much coming out. So, yeah. Well, the whites are like, you know, like this pen, and uh, I think this could actually work. There are so many bumps and so many, many things happening in the in the cat here that I'll, I just want to continue working on it. I don't want to give up. I don't want to. As I said, I don't want to make this into a, into a mediocre thing. I can pull it so far and uh, really give it what it deserves. So that is what I'm going to do. In the end, you just keep some and all the details in the claws and everything. I, I, I just just need to do that. This is just what I needed. Something more control to control it with. Huh. Okay. Cool. Huh. Inch by inch. Yeah, this is going to work. What a shame that I didn't start doing this earlier. I need a better... Hmm. 
it's so blunt, you know, it's it's hard to to really focus on small details when you have a kind of a ruler or knet gummy like this. And now you go inch by inch with this and as I said that is when it starts to become time consuming. So. It's like half past five in the morning and uh, I'm really starting to get tired and I'm freezing and I know I'm not gonna not going to reach the final destination anyway, so I'm just going to leave it. So many nice lines, you know, sharp, there's a sharp lines here, kind of sharp, then that kind of drags it out like that. You can only do this because these are breaking and it's too plump. Oh. And then there's kind of small spots. So there are a lot of small things happening, small spots small differences in texture all these things I want to work on yeah hmm.
Yeah, it's fun. Yes, it is. Okay. See you in December. Okay. Yay! It's summertime. Uh, and uh, uh, I am going to try to finish this uh, drawing of uh, my mummy cat. I have. Uh, yeah, what should I say? I tried to finish it uh, in winter time. But it turned out that that would be basically impossible because uh, it was so cold in here that I was actually not, I wasn't able to stick around long enough for that to happen. But now it is summer and uh, it's quite nice in here. So I'm just going to keep on banging on. I can actually see that despite this is a mummy cat, it has changed a little bit since the last time I was drawing it, and I was in in December, and uh, I just gave up then because it was just too cold. But I see it has actually changed a little bit. Maybe summertime it's more humid, humid, and it kind of drags in more more water into the dead tissue so and then it kind of change it gets maybe a little bit bloated or something like we all do in summertime <laughs> just kidding so anyway i'm just gonna try to give it the last touch uh when i started out this drawing i did some mistakes that is hard to basically repair because when you get the drawing a little bit wrong and you start adjusting in coal it tends to become a little bit of a mess so uh, I just have to do the best out of this that I can so is what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah. Let's see. One of the things that I've seen in charcoal drawings is that one has to give it a hue basically all over and then just kind of pull out The, the parts that are dark after the fact and I guess that is what I'm going to do here try to anyway let me give it some more uh, contrast I guess also my mother or something has moved the motif a little bit so I wasn't able to find exactly the spot where I put the light and that is why it can be important to have the if you want to paint the still life don't change it while you are actually painting doing the work I, I should stand here yeah, I'm just going to pull it a little bit towards me. Yeah. And of course, it's always something. So, uh, here, it's better. Yeah, I have to find the right spot also. That's very important. 
It has changed a little bit. It's so annoying. Uh, but I guess that is what happens to dry things. It's a very slow process, the whole thing. And um, I'm not used to drawing much. This was one of my few attempts for the last few years, which of course leaves me in the dark a little bit. But I tend to get better for every time I do stuff, so I'm gonna keep on working with charcoal. You know these holes are just holes in the skin. Uh, I guess it's moth or something that had it for dinner while it was or something while it was rotting. It's kind of what makes you makes it making me a little bit itchy actually when I when I see it. It's kind of funny, it's almost like I feel the itch of being eaten alive by small animals or insects. <laughs> Stupid as it is, you know. I have to change it a little bit here. Give it a, because now the shadow is actually from a tree here. Yeah. That's wrong actually. Coming out exactly. I think everything is wrong now. Why? Suddenly I see all these things that are just wrong. That I didn't see before. So annoying. Anyway. That is how it is when you get at some distance, because when I was working on the last time I was really cold and you, I was, couldn't concentrate properly. So I guess that is why I did some mistakes. This is a summer studio, I don't have any, basically no heat, I have an oven and stuff, but doesn't really heat up the place, so I just have to do with the best I can. My now summer it's, it's nice because the sun is kind of on the roof all day and heats up the whole thing, so it's no problem. Let's see here now. And guess the shadow comes down. Just have to. I can't really because now there is a light behind here, but I can't really get that out. I think. I, I am wondering if I'm going to make a painting of this while I'm here. Two weeks, and uh, let me see if we can get a proper canvas on the size and make a painting. I'm not claiming that I'm a good drawer, because I'm not. 
uh, my craft is painting and I can do things like this so much faster with paint because uh, I have the colors and I have all these things to work with when it comes to charcoal it is very limited for me it's only neons and I'm not that good at it so you just have to bear with me maybe you learn something or find it interesting anyway I try my best always do always will I think what I'm going to do is fixate it a little bit because when you use fixative you can uh, work on top of it after the fact and uh, get more neons out of it I should make some of the, the lines sharper should be some sharper details because if not every thing in the in the drawing becomes too too soft it becomes the same basically the same texture so you need some some harsh lines or some really deep 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 shadows You know, in reality, there is some very nice highlights. And uh, with charcoal, it's really hard to, to make them as good as they should be. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I don't have much to say actually about this drawing. I do like working with charcoal. I do actually, believe it or not. Uh, to me it is more like a painted thing. Yeah, became actually a little bit better. Now I'm going to put on some fixer teeth and fixate it a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, make it rest a little bit. Fixative. This is what you use on drawings because after a while when you keep on and when you do this you can actually go in and be a little bit more brutal as I said uh, and remove and add in as you go along. So, I've been fasting for, for 24 hours now, and I'm going to go have some eggs and some food. My first and last meal tonight, and then I'm going to keep on drawing. If you do fix a teeth in between the layers, it is much easier to work on it, on top of it. 
So, okay. okay. I think I need an ordinary ruler also. You can also remove with a knife and, and everything. So there's many things you can do with a, with a drawing like this. You can, I can go in with uh, some sharp uh, tool, and, uh, but you have to be very careful not to ruin the paper. But you can actually do a little bit of this too to kind of shake it up a little bit. But as I say, you, you really have to be careful because it's very easy to screw things up when you do that. Okie dokie. See you in the next segment. I can show you a bit like this. Okay, another segment. Uh, as you can see, I have been working a little bit more with uh, details. Now I'm going to try to go into a deeper detail. And uh, uh, the thing now is to be able to distinguish the different textures from one another. And I think that is the most, basically the most challenging, challenging job when it comes to a drawing like this. With paint, it wouldn't be that much of a problem because I have more to go on in the painting. But you know, I'll do my best. See what happens if I can actually get um, some sense of difference in the the dry skin and uh, background, but it's really it's a stretch to put it mildly. So we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Uh, I shouldn't, at this point, I shouldn't uh, do too many changes. You know, this, this tail used to be like this, and now it is kind of laying into the, into this uh, thing that I hung it up on. So it has changed a little bit, as I said, in a, in a, last segment uh, probably the heat and the humidity that has changed it a little bit but I just have to live with that and do the best I can so now I've been been when when you're gonna work with with uh, charcoal you and you want some more natural shadows and stuff you need to First, you do the shadow. It's almost like paint. It's basically almost like painting. You you don't want uh, the shadow to be a hole in the paper, and you also want there to be uh, a smooth uh, transition, whatever, from this to that. You want this to feel like it's actually hitting the paper. So how do you do that? Well, you have to work back and forth with creating an illusion of this being basically on top. And um, how do we do that? Well, we just go back and forth and back and forth until it works out. And uh, 
there is no other way to do it than that. And I kind of just go over it like this. And then I do some of the shadow. And then, you know, I just go back and forth like this. It's all about both taking away and adding. You have to go both ways. So, yeah. I'm not, uh, as I said, probably a hundred times in this video, I'm not a good drawer because I haven't practiced that much drawing. So, but I'm gonna, as I say, do much more of it because it is challenging in a different way. So, yeah. Let me see now. It's so annoying that I have to use these glasses now. Basically getting older. Some places you wanted to have more, you want to be a little bit more brutal, just a few places to create some contrast. And yeah, now I should have, I should have had an, a better ruler. You see, you don't want this to be a line. You want this to be neons. And you want these things to kind of come together. They can't be the same. It's like painting. They can't be the same texture. And as I said, that is, that is the problem with drawing. You know, charcoal, because you don't have... It's quite limited, as I say, compared to to oil paint where you can work with the paint uh, uh, you work with the paint as it is um, as if it is uh, chocolate no uh, clay you don't have that possibility here you have to trust neons only and my brain is so used to trying to create sculpture with textures and brushwork that I really get into trouble here because it's a totally different process and I have to try to calm down because when I don't get it right I kind of try to hurry it up and that is always a bad idea never trying to hurry things take it easy take a breath and just try to get it right so that's the way to go now using the fingers can be dangerous because you you can get the fat from your fingers into the drawing so you should be a little bit careful with that This, this just doesn't work, you know, it's too stiff. You know, I can actually uh, write with both my hands. And... Uh, Maybe I should try to teach myself to draw with my left hand. It's very good for the brain. When you do that, you really feel lost. Because 
because of it, my brain is not used to it. But it's very good for the brain, especially as you go older. Grow older, man, I mean. Because now I really have to try to control it. Just think about it. if you lose one arm, you have exercised your both arms to do these things. It will be no problem for you to just change. But I can actually feel it's more stressful because how do I? <laughs> it's so strange. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna practice that now. I need to practice when nobody's looking because I'm also getting stressed. So. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah, there's. I'm trying to. These two are quite the same, actually. But, and they also have some of the same texture, so it's really hard to see. Just go over it like this and try to get some. And then just remove some of it after that. Because the, there's most light in here, down here here then there is some stuff happening there natural by crossing over like that then I can actually pull out pull out some here top that is a way you do it actually you go like this and then you can pull some light out and then you uh, over that again and that way you kind of linked the surfaces together so yeah it has changed a lot actually since last time so to me now it's actually some light on here and you know I should just I should have just start the whole thing over because now I can actually see where I could have done better, but I want to finish it. So I can do another one later. I should just bring it to Oslo and do stuff there. See, okay, this one. 
Oops, further down. It's probably a very boring video. More boring than usual. around this that line is way too harsh and behind here it's more light and this one goes a little bit up And I need this one to be more round. You know, there's too much happening in the background. So maybe that, that, that takes a lot of... That too, you know, I would like to have some textures in the background. But then it, it basically takes away uh, the focus on the cat and the cat is what has the most textures I think I'm just going to calm down the background more and focus on on building the most texture in the cat maybe that is a idea uh, what I use then to calm it down a little bit is basically some paper and I think I showed you in the last segment. Just want to calm this down, and that way I will get the cat more out. Like this. And get kind of the charcoal more into the surface remove some of the noise there's noise very noisy like this maybe that made it better you know there's a big difference between a shadow and this now it's quite dark up here but down here it's kind of more transparent shadow and I think that actually helped a little bit to, to make them a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to fumble myself into something that works yeah I actually do think that helped a little bit calm it down yeah okay
Anyway, I just keep on doing this and uh, yeah. do some close ups later and uh, just see what happens. Okay, here we are again. Now I had to do some changes uh, on the foot and there's always and I also find these they are a little bit better because they don't cracking up all the time so I can actually control it a little bit better. Oops. Uh, now I kind of like these natural ones very much but as I say it's more difficult to get some control on it and I also had to do some changes here so I'm going to try to do that this is dark this is a dark one I'll try to just get this thing to work behind there um, this drawing is way more difficult than I thought in the beginning and I don't even know if it's gonna be something I will feel is good because it was just it's really hard to see maybe I should go closer to it so I see more yeah I might do that maybe closer object like this because I'm a little bit too far away from it uh, my eyesight isn't as good as it used to be so and uh, there's kind of a lot of details in it like this see now just go a little bit more out like this so maybe that's better yeah, I see more detail now. So, the thing is that I, I see totally clear without glasses when I look at the cat. The problem is here, it becomes a little bit blurry because I'm a little bit uh, uh, long sighted. Or, uh, and that's a good thing, it's better to be that than actually be. Uh, that I have to be close to the object because if I have to be close to the object that would yeah maybe that would be better well the fact is that I have plus one glasses now and I guess I just have to live with it as you can see I'm trying to go in directions here and I'll try I do actually uh, and this leg is a little bit little bit lighter than the background but it's not much so I'll just do this and try to even out this too ripped it up like that then I used a knet gummy as it's called in Norwegian and get some more contrast let me see yeah I'm really getting frustrated you know and in the beginning it was more sketchy and as I go along, it's as I told my father today that I kind of tend to grow and grow between my hands. I just see more and more detail. And I more and more want to try to kind of make it into a painting. But of course it isn't a painting. It is a drawing. Almost, I have basically drawn it as if I was painting it in many ways. And that is the kind of artist I am. So 
I am a painter. I like the surfaces to be uh, worked with. I'm not a sketch artist, um, but I'm sure I could have been a sketch artist if I wanted to. But I'm not, so. I really, and here I try to just get this to feel like the shadow is actually hitting the surface as I was talking about. And uh, if I can get, the problem is when I squint my eyes on it, it's this and this is almost the same hue. Despite a couple of details, that is more different. It can be coming okay. Uh, as I say, I'm not even sure I'm going to call it a drawing anymore. It's just thing, thing in between. small things. I guess I probably even have to go even closer to actually see more details. This is more time consuming to draw a drawing, there is no doubt about it, it's more time consuming than uh, painting. And you should believe it would be the opposite, but when you are a trained painter, that is basically what happens. I'm just a novice when it comes to this. Uh, I know people who are way, way better than me in drawing. And uh, uh, I have no So, so I have no high thoughts about me as a drawer, but it's kind of fun anyway, you know. It's nice to do something else for once. And I have so many things in Oslo also that I'm going to paint, you know, the bear cranium, my late dog Timian, I have a skeleton, uh, because I kind of buried him in the forest and dug him up here again 
after he rotted away and I'm going to also both draw and paint his skull so that's going to be fun it's kind of strange really because I keep dreaming about him and uh, it's almost like he, in my dreams my dog is still alive and, uh, Yeah. This is a dead cat. If I knew about this or thought about this, I would actually make some hay and put my dog into the hay and just dry them out like this so he became a but this process because there is no fur, there is no uh, in, uh, on this cat and uh, I guess that process takes many years to happen to get this kind of uh, because it's a really mummy it's a real mummy and with a dog that is bigger Will take probably a little bit more time, I reckon. See here. Yeah, I need to go closer to do more details to get that try three D effect. This is becoming a very long video. how it is you know just keep on banging on and Outside again, always does in my studio. Okay. At this place in the country, I <laughs> mean, in my studio. Well, sometimes it actually always also rains in my studio. Maybe some, maybe some lines like that could actually understate things. Then again, I'm kind of allergic to lines because there are no such thing as lines, and that is the first thing a person has to understand is that don't draw lines but then again if you look at the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci you can actually see how he's consciously using the lines to under underpin or understate different things that he that helps to strengthen the shape and the, the feel of the painting of the drawing sorry and that's basically I think I'm also need to be able to use to my benefit. Now, I know people who would stand with this for days on ends and just do all the small details. Maybe that is what I have to do, you know. Because I'm kind of beyond the sketch a long time ago. And if you go beyond the sketch, you just have to kind of try to take it to the next level.
in here the rain the roof it's really lovely there was a couple of girls today in the news that have been killed by lightning in Norway and that means that actually has died more kids in Norway from lightning this year than COVID I must be so sad for the parents I mean losing two kids and the third one was really hurt in a hospital strange I mean what is your chance of being hit by lightning Yeah, I would love to have the get this um, this dry skin feel to it, but it's gonna be really, 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 really difficult. So just see how far I go. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see here. So, a little bit of progress, uh, it was easier when I got closer to it, but well, what I need now is basically a ruler that can I can remove more small details and I need a basically ruler that can go between and can pick up the small detail so I can start going deeper into it and then I need one of the ones you know that you're using on a more like a lead the lead pen a brilliant it's called in Norway it's called brilliant so it would be like a like one of these just with a kind of lead type of it's not lead anymore actually because I don't think it's even legal because of the lead poisoning but they usually have a small ruler on the end or so I just need to be able to get smaller uh, get into smaller details and uh, yeah but then again I don't even know if it's necessary let's see now this this and to give this a little bit more I have to move a little bit behind here so that can actually explain the shape also. I'll drag it a little bit out like this so it looks like the shadow kind of looks is more on on it yeah I see new things all the time It's going back and forth and back and forth here. It's hopefully moving closer every time.
Uh -huh. This one, just go over like this. And there's some more here. There's a line here. Yes. Hmm. So many things now that it starts to gonna pop up. A lot of stuff happening here. So man, small things that I can only it's very hard to pick out these things with this this one uh, I need something harder and more pinpointed and I don't want to I have this white thing but I don't want to start using that because I feel it's kind of cheating I and there's not actually so much white in this I just want to I also have to make a, a little bit more um, texture in the background there. I'm going to make it a little bit darker over here. And uh, just keep on adding all these small details. I can't film this whole process, it's just ridiculous because I don't even know if I'm gonna make it. So I'm just gonna have bought some better equipment. I'm gonna film some more, just show what I'm doing. And then I will keep doing it.
just want to get some more things happening in it. So just goes over it to get some more life into the surface because when I use the paper it kind of became a little bit lifeless and that's also a problem so now I'm just trying to and also if I go back and forth and back and forth here uh, I will get a different type of um, directions in the drawing it's more it will be more uh, symmetrical this one is more chaotic and if I can kind of tighten up this it will I will kind of differentiate those two surfaces just by doing like two directions like up and down and side to side because here there are many different kind of directions and types of yeah. also nice to make it feel like it's actually laying on top of something this also go like this way and that way and then I can cross over again so I just keep on going back and forth to get a more lifelike surface uh, all of this is just you know, I just have to figure it out as I go along because I'm, as I said, there's a long time since I actually did much of any drawing with charcoal. And uh, I don't really know how, to be honest. And I've said that many times now. So, I guess I just have to figure it out. And the best way to figure stuff out is to fail. Fail, fail, fail. It's two papers linked together. different ruler I need some something that kind of grabs the charcoal better and, and this is not really it
kind of starting to become a little bit interesting, I have to say. So, just do like this. And yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Okay, here we are again. Now, I've been working for a while. Uh, as you can see, probably, maybe, I have been crossing over and also creating textures uh, all over. So what I've been doing is basically uh, just giving it a uh, medium dark. Here, going over and crossing over like this and creating then textures in the background. Uh, crossing over this way, this way, this way and strengthening different shadows and details. I also have this, as I was talking about the last segment, uh, ruler here, so that I can go in and pinpoint more you know, places I wanna pull things out. And uh, with this, this is more like the Bleon thing, with the lead, lead thing, that you actually do other types of drawings with. But it's more easy for me to control that than that that thing here, which is more crude and removes more basically too much many times. So yeah, I'm kind of starting to get somewhere. Uh, it was quite important to make also textures in the background here so it actually feels like a whole uh, drawing because it started more to look like a, uh, when it wasn't anything in the background it looked more like it was a it didn't hang together now that everything is more like a space so yeah I think it's kind of also going to put in some stuff in the background you know there's there's stuff on this wall here or this or the wall but the thing that is on uh, and that will actually give it some more yeah some more dynamic things in the drawing uh, I think actually this is some charcoal from before on that surface so we're gonna do charcoal with charcoal uh, I also moved a little bit closer to the drawing so I can actually see the details better this makes it easier for me to create details like these small things here enhance different things like the light in there let's see if I can find a viewer a little bit better. Let's see now. I have one in my yeah. yeah. It's a it's a time-consuming process when you get to this point. And that's a ruler. And I try to remove some of the charcoal with that. This is not actually charcoal ruler, but kind of have. Uh, as I said, a good effect that I can get removed somewhat. Also have this, and it does the same trick, but I will cut up small pieces of this and try to, to more pinpoint where I want to go with it. Uh -huh. I'll create more space by making some parts of it more light and then I can push it down again so yeah it has actually become a little bit more fun to work with because I almost came to a point where I started to give up I didn't feel that I was basically able to create a coherent or drawing that I could 
live with but at this point I actually start to feel that I'm getting somewhere and uh, just do some more details and and uh, I think it will turn out quite fine in drawing like this it's it's even more important to remove stuff than to add stuff because you have the white in the paper so like that now it becomes more depth all the time with these it was so much better to work with these because the other ones as I said was just keep on breaking and and so frustrating but this I can actually do more more details with then you just want to strengthen uh, you see now dark one day one now it's more sharp and I can give it some places I give it more uh, sharpness I can also go in and do all these kind of small details like uh, uh, these uh, things coming out it is basically collagen uh, collagen or it isn't here it is more like the muscle skeletons or something anyway so I want to get some light on top of here You see how nice this removes it and you go back to the basically all the way back to the white in the paper like this and down here and that is a way to really dig into it and get it to come alive again like this and then I do uh, on this side should be done a little bit again and I basically build a highlight and stuff and get some textures this is of course some bones underneath and inside inside it there's a lot of stuff happening also inside so I can pull out some of this it's hard to determine what this is just a lot of remnants of the intestines so Actually, I kind of remove some of the paper when I'm doing this. As long as you don't make a hole in it, it's just fine. See that? How nice it is. So much easier to control. There's some kind of a spots here. It's almost like the skin is a little bit of spotty. And uh, you see now how I just build. Maybe you see it. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Uh, I just build more and more uh, depth and 
texture. I just have to paint this cat. I just have to paint it. It's just so beautiful. I'm gonna go to the city tomorrow and I'm gonna buy some some um, uh, buy some uh, canvases and I'm gonna to try to do kind of a rough version of them. Uh, I also have some other stuff I want to do, so maybe a self-portrait or something. So let's see what happens. I feel inspired. You know, it's very important to have some have good equipment when you're going to do drawings. It was very hard for me to get this right when I only had this one, you know. It's very nice to work with, but when you're going into details like that, it's really just, just annoying because you can't really control it. So, this is so much better. so many details here. I also have one cat in Oslo so I'm gonna do a similar thing thing with. So looking forward to that. You have I have some very bright light on the feet here you see down here and it's nice to be able to remove this more chaotic charcoal and get some of these details in. I just remove it and then I go over it again after the fact. So there too there is a shadow behind there. There's no shadow of course, more light behind here. So, let's see, and then I take this one and just create this contrast here. So like this, okay. And you have the muscle things, the bones here. Go down like this, there's is there's also a tooth very bright tooth coming out here actually so then I do like that and just throws it in here I just do like like there it looks like there's something there. It doesn't have to be that detailed because I don't really see it that much. But you know, you want, at least I wanna wanna have a feeling that it's there. An illusion.
Yeah, okay. Then I'm gonna film some details and uh, when I do some close-ups and details. And I basically we'll call it today. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, here we are again. I've been working for a while and uh, just doing some uh, touch-up. Then I will. Uh, then I will spray it one more time. Uh, I almost felt today that there were no no way I was going to manage to make this come alive but I think I was wrong I think I actually managed to make it yeah come alive literally and uh, The way I did that is just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, as I've been saying all the time. It's basically the only way to do it. I need to get a better ruler. I actually have used up this one already. So. I actually got this from my mother, but it's almost done. Uh, it's so subtle, it is so subtle, it is uh, almost impossibly subtle. Hard to see. But, to see here, ah, oh, it fell. I also need a sharpener. So, so much better for using these. It's unbelievable. We're kind of deeper into these details now. Just strengthening things. Basically crossing over, removing, crossing over. And remove some light. No, remove and get some more light so then I just cross over again. I've also been uh, doing a lot in the surroundings. I'm going to zoom out now so you can actually see it. Oh, I have yeah oh you can see something stopping it here actually what is that oh oh yeah this one so there can see how also the details here and you can actually see how I have worked the whole surface what I've been doing is basically toning and toning and toning what I'm doing is crossing kind of crisscrossing like this and then I crisscross like this and maybe even like this but I try to keep it in certain directions I also try to give the surface some more life uh, of course I have to there I actually use my my mind and I interpret things and um, uh, add things that are not necessary there but things that I feel give the drawing 
uh, a better Let me say better aesthetic. A better aesthetic, yeah. More di dynamic. Di it becomes more dynamic. Of course, I could also. I have been working over here too, and been working the same way. But here, I try to keep it. More open because I want the light to be alive, but I want the sense of it being a surface. So, yeah, maybe zoom a little bit into the details here so you can see closer. You can see that I have been basically crisscrossing directions. It basically, it's almost like painting actually. It's, a, it's a much of the same process. You have to find the right directions and, and uh, not overdo it. Don't kill it. Don't go too far. Also, just kind of strengthen it and strengthen it, and keep and get it to become more and more dynamic. Also, important for me to criss cross these things, open it up, and kind of linking the two surfaces together. It's basically the same thing I do in painting. Uh, and then I go this way. Also, this can't be this dark because in reality it is not that dark. So I kind of get it up again. But it's going to be easier when I get a new one of these because I need smaller rulers. This is not good. It's more for a different kind of pen also. So I'll just wait with those details until uh, tomorrow when I have more and better tools. This one to be brighter. What? No, uh, that's wrong. They are closer together. So maybe just a sharp edge there and then I pull it like this just kind of linking those together but uh, drawing like this is a very good oh shit you didn't even see what I was doing 
so sorry. <sighs> so stupid. I was working. I was working up here and up here. Also, I was working there. Okay. Now, sorry for the abrupt uh, cut off last time. I suddenly didn't have any more space on my card. But I've been working with this for a while after that and it really now I have kind of saved it and uh, I think I am just doing the last touch up basically what made it so more much more easy was that I bought this thing here which has a ruler in it which makes me kind of using the ruler almost as a the same way I'm using the charcoal uh, I can crisscross like this and then I go over it and then I kind of more and more create more and more layers of different directions and different because that is actually with the cat there you have so much texture and so much kind of traces of the fur and you know it's so much happening that you need to go over it again and 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 again to get that feeling. So this made this job way easier for me. So yeah, that's a good thing. As you can see, they're getting shorter. So, but it has been a very inspiring journey. I was really frustrated there for a while. I really almost gave it up but now today I felt that I kind of at least close the deal as far as I can now the thing with me is that I learn a hell of a lot for every single every single uh, artwork I do it can be a painting a drawing whatever I learn like a child from my mistakes and I will take everything I learned from this process and bring it to my next charcoal drawing and uh, what happens is that, is that I basically start out fresh and start out being able to look more into the future like foresee what will happen if I do this what will happen if I do that and it's the same process as painting uh, and uh, uh, doing that I become better fast so yeah just do some more details here There's some stuff happening there uh, I also bought this new one here so I can actually sharpen my tools, which is imperative. If I actually had started using these from the start, this drawing had, would have been finished much faster because the charcoal that I used to use, this one without this on, it's very soft and they keep on breaking and you can't really get them to become sharp and good tools. So having these is just crucial and uh, I would recommend that you use stuff like this instead so yeah uh, then I also kind of can just cross over like this and I can pick that back up again and that way I create the same kind of basically texture as as I would do in uh, the same kind of feel that I get in my paintings uh, so yeah uh, except from of course the clay thing with that I get a more 3d surface this is a 2d surface so with uh, paints I get also the, the 3D with uh, the paint texture and stuff. So. That goes behind. 
there and behind here. So also I was managed to get out the highlights in the rib bone which also made this become a little bit more 3D uh, and uh, yeah that is what happened when you don't give up and you just keep on banging on of course I've also been doing more work around it and creating more things happening in the background this I keep very open and this here I go basically a little bit deeper but in general I just I've given it more more yeah, power or whatever so I'm gonna close the deal soon and just say Okay, I can live with this. And that is not easy, especially when you don't when you have this kind of manic like uh, personality that never get pleased with anything. It's really hard to to stop. And sometimes it is very important to just stop and you know say okay. I'll do better next time, which I will do. I've now been inspired to make way more just through doing this because uh, it's a while since I did anything in charcoal. It has inspired me to start doing way more studies since charcoal. And I kind of feel that I'm going to be able to become quite good at it if I give it some more time. It's also good if you want to do prints, like you want to do lithography, little graph, graphic works. It's very good to draw more because your graphic works will, of course, become better when you are when you draw better. Uh, because when I do that, I have to draw on a stone, uh, and. Uh, That is basically you are drawing with kind of pencils like that, or and um, yeah. If you're better in drawing, it will make the job way more easy. Of course, when you do that, you usually use a calcare paper, so you kind of copy the uh, you tracing the motif into the stone, and then you kind of work with it to get it because you can't really do many mistakes when you do on stone and then you have to kind of start all over again if you do too many mistakes so. but you know the scrabble and the, the shadows are difficult difficult not enough in, in themselves Very nice tool. I wish I bought that a week ago, uh, but I didn't. So yeah. So what I've been doing in the background here is basically uh, just like if you see here. I have been crisscrossing, crisscrossing and crisscrossing and uh, basically the same I've been doing here despite it looks way more white it is a lot of back and forth there too to create some surface that is more linked together uh, yeah I can live with this now, hope you can.
also crisscrossing over like this so that the shadow actually feels like it's hitting something if I if it was way too white here you wouldn't get that feeling you kind of have to then it would just be if, if there was kind of a hole here you would just feel like there's a hole and there's not really a shadow that is also a thing you have to think about when you do stuff like this maybe put in something like this just in inventing something and maybe continue it like this and then you kind of get a surface behind the shadow uh, yeah pick that up again This is probably a very long video. I also created this and first it was too strong so I have to dampen it down again because it took too much uh, attention from this. And it's kind of a thing you have to do there. You have to just go back and forth and, and at some point sometimes you do something like this way too strong and it takes over and then you just have to kind of dampen it down again so that the surface behind here doesn't make too much noise but I want to have some uh, I want to have some uh, texture in the background despite that actually competing a little bit with a uh, with a cat uh, so it's not a perfect work but I think it became quite nice and uh, of course people don't buy dead cats but that is not the point I don't need a customer for everything and sometimes actually people buy stuff like this because you have a certain small group of people that actually enjoy things that are a little bit different and having a dead mummy cat on the wall for some people will actually be quite fun and maybe even be a topic on parties and like that so yeah some people do anyway yes get a highlight on this one too bring it out and push down here okay okay I will just continue working with it uh, for a while more and then I will show you the finished result and I'm feeling quite happy with myself actually right now Hope I don't destroy it <laughs> while you're not looking. Anyway, see you. Okay, here we are at the end of the drawing session. I hope you really got something out of this because it took a while, not just to create it, to draw it, but also to create this video. So I do hope you got something out of it and uh, that you will leave a comment, give a thumbs up, share it on social media. Also check out my Patreon for more. And if you like me to support or to help you uh, become a better painter, I will happily do that if you support me a little bit on Patreon. So with this, I will now beg you a fine farewell. And uh, really do hope you enjoyed it. You can see... How I did it. It's it's gone through so many different processes that it's hard to actually understand myself. But anyway, see you in my next video. 
Okay, hey, you actually managed to stay on until the end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Here you can see some of the details. Okay, close up. You see, I've basically been been uh, drawing this as I paint. Uh, it's just been work in progress, and I've been overpainting and over over drawing. I mean, over and over again, and. You be the judge of the result. I am uh, mixed in my view, so I'm just going to do better next time. But I hope you got something out of it and that you check out my Patreon and support my work and give a thumbs up, leave a comment. And I hope to see you in the next video.